is of power because we are kings and our words matter. God doesn't like the man who's got it all stored up for himself. He says, don't worry, I'll take it and give it to the good man. <laughs> the righteous man. What is the good man all about? He's the one that is going to give, distribute it. He's the one that is going to use it for all kinds of good work. God of glory, God of wonder, God of beauty, you reign through all eternity before the mountains or the earth had you were our everlasting Lord. You've been our home. You've been our shelter safe for young and old. To generations past, we stand in awe of a God so your faithfulness, oh Lord, you've been a dream. God of glory, God of glory, God of wonder, God of beauty, you ain't too much
Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Through Abraham, Jesus was born, therefore he became important in the scheme of things. But through us, we are the generation, or we are the generations, through which the gospel will spread throughout the whole world. The message of the Lord Jesus Christ and the salvation through him will go to every family upon this earth. That makes us very important. That makes you and I very important in the things of God. That is why God wants to help us. That's why God wants to heal us. That's why God wants to set us free. That's why God wants to give us life. That's why God wants to give us good life. Uh, so that we are preserved just like Abraham supernaturally, blessed supernaturally, so that we are protected supernaturally. God takes special care of us because we are in the scheme of God's program. We are part of God's outworkings. He's, he's working some things out and we are very important people in that. And through us, the gospel is going to spread everywhere. Now... This is what is expressed in, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Please turn with me to Deuteronomy 8, 18. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he sowed to the fathers, as it is this day. Now this is full of words, full of meaning here. It says, it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. Many, many years ago when I first started hearing truths like this, I remember one preacher said, that as soon as God saved us, one of the anointings that comes upon a believer from God, one of the things that God blesses a believer is with, is the ability to produce wealth. As it is said here, the power to get wealth. He put it as the ability to produce wealth. I couldn't believe what I heard. You know, this preacher was saying that God saves you as soon as Jesus comes into a person's heart, one of the special anointings that is given to that person, that one of the things that makes that person very special, is this, that God has now endowed upon that person, given to that person, poured out upon that person, a special anointing. I've heard of a lot of anointings, but I've never heard of this one at that point in my life. Uh, and he said, one of the special anointings that come and rest upon that person now as a believer is, that he can produce wealth. That was shocking news to me. I said, my God, you know, nobody ever told me this. He says he gives you the power to produce wealth or the power to get wealth. Why? Why would God give the believer as soon as he gets to know Jesus, as soon as Jesus comes in, why would a God give a believer the power to get wealth? Now, later on, as I began to get into this and understand this, I really got the revelation of this thing. The reason is this, now that you got Jesus in your heart, you are the person that is to take Jesus to many other people. You are the person that needs to fly everywhere and go everywhere and help others that preach the gospel. And you are the person to make a contribution towards that. You are the person that makes it possible. Since you got Jesus in your heart, now you understand how important this message concerning this gospel of Jesus Christ is so important. You are the person that understands what it does for a person, how it is the power of God unto salvation. You understand more than anyone else what it will do for a person, how that it must go to the ends of the world and every creature must hear the gospel. You understand it. Nobody else understands it. There are many rich people in the world that don't understand that. They, you can tell them all day, they'll never understand that. But once you get Jesus in your heart, once you are saved, you begin to understand that uh, God understands that you are a person, a key person, because you understand this message of the gospel and you understand the importance of this message, how that it must be sounded in the ears of every creature all over the world. That is why he enables you, empowers you with wealth. Now that is, when I understood that, I began to really preach on it. That's what set me free because I used to be afraid in the early days to preach about this because I thought, what will people think? You know, I'm preaching about this, you know. <laughs> I used to be kind of shy, shy away from this, you know, and speak it softly, you know, so I don't, you know, 
uh, topple anything, you know, uh, <laughs> destroy anything or, or um, trouble anybody. But then the more I understood this, the more, the bolder I got because I understand that the purpose is this, that you and I are the only ones that understand the vision, the heart of God and how that the gospel must go to every creature. Just like God said to Abraham, in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And in 17th chapter of Genesis, God said, this is the covenant that I make with you, Abraham. I will make you the father of many nations, not just your nation, of many nations. That is speaking of all the Gentiles hearing the gospel and we come from many nations. We are many kinds of people come from many backgrounds, many races, many uh, backgrounds. And to us, to all of us, Abraham is the father. He is the father of faith. Amen. So God has really made Abraham the father of many nations through Jesus Christ. So that is why... I really got bold because I said, man, if this is what the wealth is for, if this is the purpose of wealth, then I must preach to people. And that, that's, what, that's why, you know, I think uh, the devil has got the people all locked up into some kind of a wrong belief and, 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 and they're afraid. You know, one pastor came and asked me, he heard me preach on this thing somewhere else and he said, why don't you come and preach in my church? He was thinking, well, if this guy came and preached in my church about this, then people will really learn to give and all that, you know, so that the church income will be better, you know. That's the motive that he had, you know. So he said, Pastor, you must come to our church for a three-day seminar and you preach this, this very thing that you preached. This will set people to free to give. I said, why don't you preach? He said, brother, I'm afraid, brother. People will think something about me. But you come and preach, brother. You are an outsider. You can come and tell them to give. They won't mind. If I tell something, I said, brother, I'm not going to come to your church. You better understand the uh, truth about this. You better understand why wealth is there for. Wealth is not there so that your church can have some income, you know. And you can pay your electricity bill. And you can say pay your rent. And you can just exist and pay your salaries and all that. Wealth is there. See, you don't need wealth for that. You just, all you got to do is just do what everybody's doing now. Just get up and just beg to the, beg the people. Tell, well, we need more money because it costs so much for electricity. And look at these lights, you know, how much this cost. And, and we need to pay the rent. And we got this coming and that coming. Everybody be a little generous. That'll do. That'll take care of all your bills. Believe me. I am speaking from this side. I know what will take care of bills. That is enough to take care of bills if you just... Get up there and tell the people what you need, you know. We need to pay so many thousands for electricity. We need to pay so many thousands to buy a chair. We need to buy this. We need to get this. We need money for this. Will anybody give some money, you know? Please give more generously. Now, that kind of approach is enough to pay your bills. I mean, I'm not joking. That is enough to pay your bills. But I am talking about wealth. I am not talking about a church being able to pay bills or a ministry able to pay their bills. I am talking about wealth. Wealth will make the gospel go to every last household, every creature in this world. Wealth is needed for that. Wealth is needed for that. Nothing else will do. Only wealth will do. We must have enough to make this possible. That is why I preach it boldly and strongly and I preach it many times. I come round and round this subject because... Why do we exist? We don't exist here to have a nice church and come here and have nice fellowship among us and go away. As we were taking communion, I was thinking about how many people are not here today that are out there. The people that are out there are more than the number that are in here. I'm impressed with the number that is here. But I'm not so impressed to say, well, we had a nice church. You know, we'll come and see our church. We got a nice place. We got a nice group of people. You know, so many people come. Wonderful, you know, three, four services and all of these things happening. No, I'm not satisfied. I'll tell you, if you really do the job like Jesus said and preach the gospel to every creature, there will be no place on this earth big enough to accommodate all of them. And God loves people and God wants his people to have wealth so that every person will be able to hear the gospel. The amen should be a little better than that. <laughs> so I know, I got a hang of it. I've, I know why wealth is there. I am not afraid of it. anybody, you know, you know, that attacks this. I'm ready to answer them. I know what wealth is for. It is so that God can establish his covenant 
this new covenant through Jesus Christ with every single person and bring them into this glorious covenant and establish his covenant with them. That is why wealth is for Wealth is not so that you can heap it upon yourself. We don't preach that kind of wealth here. Wealth is for this purpose and that is what we preach and we better understand what we are all up to. Amen? So you have power to get wealth. Now that was news to me. So I began to believe from that day onward that I have the power to get wealth. I have it in me. I've got what it takes to produce wealth. See, a lot of people go to work, they labor, they sweat, and they toil all day. They go from one thing to another, one failure to another, and all they have to show their life Many years they worked and they fail and fail and fail and reduce and reduce and reduce and become nothing. And they never realize and they never think about this fact that God has endowed them with the power to produce wealth. They've got it in them. And I say to you today, when you go to work tomorrow, this Monday should be different Monday. Mondays are slow days, they tell me. But I'll make your Monday exciting Monday. When you go to work on Monday this time, get up Monday morning and say, praise God, I'm going to go open shop. I'm going to do business. I've got the power, the anointing from God, this divine ability, extraordinary ability, this supernatural ability given to me by God to produce wealth. God wants me to do it. I am on a mission from God to produce wealth on this earth. Why? So that the gospel can go to every last person in this world. Don't never lose track of the purpose. See, when you lose track of the purpose, then you're gone. You go on the wrong way. Now, only with this you will understand what I'm going to say today. There are some very difficult passages in the Bible. While you're sitting here and listening to me talk like that, I'm sure that people with so many backgrounds, you know, uh, so many people coming from so many Christian backgrounds, immediately certain things are going on in their mind. They'll say, well, Pastor Sam is preaching like this, but what did we hear? It says, godliness with contentment is great gain. That is running in some people's mind. And some other people are thinking, we bring nothing into this world and we take nothing. Why is he talking like this? That is another verse. That's all Bible verses. I'll show you now. And another Bible verse. See, they've read the Bible. <laughs> See, that is why, you need, see, that one man told me, well, I don't go to church, brother. I just read my own Bible at home. I said, that's why you're like this. You don't know nothing, you know. You got to go to a church where there is anointed preaching, giving you the revelation of the word of God, where you are challenged to think, where you're challenged to look into the word of God and consider the word of God, see if these things are true and consider these things and embrace them if they are true, reject them if they are not true. That is why church is there. So you're not here to sit there and accept everything that I say. You have an obligation to look into it, to find out what I'm, if what I'm saying is true. If it is true, then it is God's truth and you better be serious about it and you get a hold of it and go home with it and begin to practice what the Bible says. So he said, well, I read my Bible, I just pray. I said, you can do that all eternity, you'll never learn anything, you see. Why did God give pastors, evangelists, and teachers, and, and so on? God gave for this purpose. So that's what we're into doing this, you know. So a lot of people are thinking, well, Bible says, you know, as long as you have enough to eat and enough to clothe yourself with, you must be satisfied. You must be content. That's also another Bible verse. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Many have pierced themselves with great sorrows because they went after money. All of these things is running in their head. It's all in the Bible. And let me turn to that passage right now. 1 Timothy chapter 6. I, I stated the purpose for wealth first. Why? Because then all the difficult verses will fall into place. You'll have no difficulty. See, that's the fulcrum around which everything rotates. So, the purpose is the thing that everything hinges upon. People just spin without a purpose sometimes. They just wheel out of joint sometimes, you know. They say, well, the Bible says this, brother. The Bible says that. I read this and so-and-so said this. Well, they don't have a hang of what, what it is saying, really. What it is saying, really, is so important and it is so simple to understand. Turn with me to 1 Timothy chapter 6. We'll go to one of those difficult passages that bother people, that prohibit people from embracing this truth. 
Now listen to this. Verse 6. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. This is a golden verse for some people. Godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing. So many, I've heard more Christians say this. You know, then Lord is my shepherd. <laughs> In my days, you know, they'll normally say this kind of thing. Like I told you, on the first of the month, they'll preach on the Lord is my shepherd. Rest of the month. <laughs> it is this kind of verse. We brought nothing, we're going to take nothing. So we don't want nothing. Because what are we going to do with all these things? You know, we brought nothing, we take nothing. Now listen to this. Having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. All right? That's another favorite verse. But those who desire to be rich, oh, this is a very big favorite. Those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. In other words, many people have gotten into this pursuit of money and have ended up in great trouble, hurt themselves with great many sorrows, pierced themselves with great many hurts. All right. First, let's consider verse 10. That one statement there, that's an all famous statement that says, the love of money is the root of all evil. I'm sure you're past this, beyond this stage of thinking that money is the root of all evil. If you're not, all you got to do is just look at the Bible. This you can find out at home itself. Just read the Bible right and it says, it's not the money that is the root of all evil. It is the love of money that is the root of all evil. There's a big difference between saying money is the root of all evil and saying that the love of money is the root of all. The word love is the thing that, is, um, that, I'm, that I'm going to pay attention to this week and the next week. You know, The love of money is the root of all evil. There's a big difference in having money and having the love of money. <laughs> if you have money, there's no problem. That's what the Bible says you must have in order to spread the gospel, in order to propagate this good news about Jesus Christ. The Bible talks about producing wealth. But if you have the love of money, that's a problem, you see. Because you will not release the money for the spread of the gospel, you see. So it is the root of all evil is not money. The root of all evil is the love of money. The Bible is very clear about this. Now, why would money be the root of all evil? Uh, why, would, why does God want us to have money? Why does God want us to produce wealth? Why does God give us this anointing, this blessing, this ability, or this power to get wealth? Why? So that he can establish his covenant. That means he can bring people into a covenant with himself. Today, it's the new covenant through Jesus Christ. That is, bring them into salvation. Bring them into a relationship with God. That is why he gives us the power to get wealth. Now, with that only, you can understand this verse. Then why is the root, uh, love of money the root of all evil? The love of money is the root of all evil because when a person loves money, he will not release that money so that the gospel can go. That becomes the root of all evil. You can see a sad world, my friend. If the gospel is not preached, that's why Jesus said that we are the salt of this earth, that we are the light of this world. We make an important contribution in the world by preaching the gospel. Things turn for the better. Why? Because the gospel is being preached. Wherever the gospel is preached, I'll tell you, things are different. Whichever society has the gospel proclaimed among them, they're a different society. You notice, you just look at history, look at, look at places. You, this is true. This is absolutely proven truth. Wherever the gospel has pro been proclaimed, the place is a different place. The root of all evil, the root of all evil is the love of money. When people withhold money and don't release it for God's purposes, then what happens is this. God is not able to send the gospel everywhere. The purposes of God is not established. This person is a hindrance and, a, uh, and he blocks the gospel from flowing. And that is evil, my friend. Love of money stops God's purposes. God cannot fulfill his purposes because people are filled with the love of money. That is why the love of money is spoken of here. And Paul is teaching this because he wants 
the people that have the money to know that you can have the money, but you can't have the love of money. You can have the money, but you must be willing to release the money for what God wants it for because money is given to you for that purpose. Money is for using. Money is not for piling up behind the walls and under the ground, hiding everywhere. It is not, <laughs> you know, even the government will catch a guy like that and take away all his money. <laughs> you know, God says, that's what I'll do too because he says, the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. God doesn't like the man who's got it all stored up for himself. He says, don't worry, I'll take it and give it to the good man. <laughs> the righteous man. What is the good man all about? He's the one that is going to give, distribute it. He's the one that is going to use it for all kinds of good work. Amen.